There we go. Good evening, everybody. Hope you can all see us and I hope you can all hear us. And those of you in the audience, please feel free to say hi. Hey, it's working. It's working. Great. Hello. Yeah. This is awesome. Okay. Give folks a moment, Twitter. Let's quickly post the fact that we are live. Uh, live at Okay. Excellent. I'm glad you can all hear us. Um, all right. Well, I guess we'll start with some housekeeping um, whilst we are uh, waiting for some more folks to join. Um, welcome to sure. the Boston Unity Group meeting for which month are we in now? April. <laughs> We're in April. Uh, it is the end of April, and uh, sorry we can't see you in person, um, but hopefully some of you may be here who can't normally come to these meetings, so we're really glad you made it. Um, my name is Chris, Chris Hart. I am a software developer based in Concord, Massachusetts, and I have been helping to organize the Boston Unity Group for a while, <laughs> about a year now, actually. Um, Graham, introduce yourself. Yeah, uh, my name is Graham. I'm a software engineer at Spryfox, which is a mobile studio. Well, we do mostly mobile games, but we're sort of a whatever indie studio. Um, yeah, we're all remote, so I've been working there for years now. Um, run Bug, been running Bug for I don't know how many years, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's been a while. And we are joined tonight by our speaker, Jonathan Ninos, um, who is here to talk to us tonight about the Excel framework in Unity. Um, I will let him do a proper introduction in a moment. Um, we'll, uh, we won't be joined tonight by Elliot, Elliot Mitchell, who is normally here, who is the, the, the organizer for Bug, who has been around for the longest. Um, he is unable to be here because it's his daughter's birthday. So happy birthday to her. And um, I hope they're having fun. Um, Priorities. So, I know. <laughs> Um, but, but yeah, so um, so normally what we would do first thing is have uh, announcements. Um, so if you have an announcement or anything you want to talk about, say say if you've got an event coming up, if you've got a game that's about to launch, if you've got a project you're looking for collaborators, job postings, that sort of thing, please post it into chat and we can read out some of those and try and get some more feedback from you guys. Um, one of the other things that we normally do uh, is give away a copy. We have a couple of codes, two codes, to uh, win a copy of JetBrains Rider, um, which is the IDE we have all been waiting for. It's a great IDE for working with Unity. Um, in terms of development, it is a lifesaver. It is extremely good, better than Visual Studio, I would say. And we have two licenses to give away. Hey, oops. Uh, let's see, we have got... So there's there's the picture of the JetBrains website. It's this very high tech. I do hope you like this. And this is the even more high tech name generator for all the people who signed up via Meetup. Hopefully, one of you lovely people will win tonight. This is the the world's best name generator. I'm going to click a button, and someone's going to win. Normally, we'd do a drum roll. Nick, are you in the audience, Nick? Please help. Please say you're here in the audience. If you're not here in the audience tonight, <laughs> we'll be very sad. However, um, we will try and get in contact with you if possible. Yeah, um, I think I think we should just like pick two people and stick with those two people because I think at the so. best of times, this <laughs> is kind of a... At the best of times, this does not always go well. Um, yeah. so Nick, if you, if, you, if you see this, please send us a message on our Twitch channel um, or email us and we will uh, or contact us via the meetup group. The meetup group has ways of contacting us. So you can send us a message. And our next winner tonight is Bob Orr. Bob, congratulations. You have also won a copy of Rider. Um, so Bob and Nick, please uh, contact us and let us know if you are able to take ownership of your licenses. Sweet. 
high tech. We're good at this. Um, so uh, let's have a look. Do, do we have any announcements? I don't yes. see any announcements. Hey, yes, excellent. Nick is here. Great, Nick. Um, I will message <laughs> you shortly. Um, so, um, wow, that's brilliant. That's amazing. <laughs> that, that worked out pretty well. <laughs> so, um, Graham, did you have any announcements? Yeah, sure. Uh, so May 27th is our next meetup. Uh, we're going to have uh, Luigi from Pop Cannibal talking about kind words, um, which was recently uh, the recipient of a BAFTA, which is pretty insane. Um, so he's going to be talking about um, uh, empathetic design in that game. So uh, his, his sort of blurb is it's a comfy chat about why the feelings of your players matter and all the fun ways that you can manipulate them. Uh, so it's May 27th. We're going to do the same deals right now. Uh, stream it on Twitch. Um, yeah, I much to say more than that. Uh, check the meetup page uh, for more info about that and uh, RSVP so you can win the Jeff Rains license. Um, yeah, uh, Boston Indies is on May 18th. Uh, they haven't announced what they're going to do yet, but uh, definitely check out the, the meetup page for them to uh, see, see what that ends up being. Um, speaking of which, uh, a good way to, to find that out is to go to the Boston Game Dev Slack. So if you're not already on there, um, it's slack.bostongamedev.com. Uh, there's an events channel in that Slack channel or in that Slack uh, workspace, I guess, uh, that uh, we post all the events that we do and um, all the details about that. So that's, that'd be a great place to, to find out what Boston News is up to. Um, again, slack.bostongamedev.com. I'll post that in the Twitch chat as well. Um, yeah, and that was, that was all I got. <laughs> so <laughs> that's excellent okay um both of our winners are in the audience i'm super pleased oh my god what's this up is first great. this is great <laughs> this is like the first time we've ever had this this happen so this is a momentous occasion and it bodes well so uh yeah let's 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 get the, let's get this rolling then so jonathan um i will um hand over to you and you can Tell us all about the changes to the XR framework and exciting, okay. exciting things. Um, sounds great. Let me uh, share my screen first before we get started. Okay. All right. You see? Yes. Great. Um, so hi, let me uh, so get closer to my mic. Okay, so um, what we're going to talk about tonight is the new Unity XR platform and the XR plugins and the toolkits that are built on top of those um, platforms. So first, a you know shout out to everyone. Hello. And uh, there's a big bug there that we're all kind of dealing with. <laughs> um, just uh, take a, a, a minute or two to introduce myself. Um, I have, uh, a, I'm a Unity developer uh, and been doing it for, you know, five plus years. Um, I have, my company is Parker Hill XR Studio. Right now it's a sole proprietor. I have had uh, employees and contractors and depending on the project load. Um, and my background is also in you know, I've started a couple of companies in product management. A little more background about myself. I have a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree in computer graphics from Syracuse University and a master's degree from the Media Lab at MIT. I helped organize the MIT uh, Reality Hackathon. Um, I had in the past worked in CAD at a number of companies and then in Ruby on Rails and full stack web development. But as I mentioned, I've been using Unity since 4.x and I got my Oculus with the DK2. Um, I've developed some games. One of the more popular is the Power Solitaire VR, which is cross-platform and runs on Steam and Oculus and, and it's actually still out there on Daydream. <laughs> Um, just this month, we, I released a new game that I developed with my son, who is a mechanical engineer called Epic Resources. It's a mobile game, and it has a augmented reality component to it. Uh, it's optional viewing mode. So check that out and uh, give us five stars only if it, we deserve it. 
Um, and then also, I'm an author. I've written several books on Unity and VR and AR. I'm presently working on the third edition of my my uh, Unity Virtual Reality Projects book that is due out this summer. It has projects including like a zombie shooter, uh, balloons, uh, teleportation mechanics, a uh, um, like an audio shield type of uh, game, a art gallery, uh, 360 media, a storytelling with VR and timeline, and some uh, you know performance uh, issues and projects. So that's that's kind of my little sales pitch there. So um, what I want to talk about tonight, uh, the, this is kind of the agenda. Is I'm going to do a brief history of the Unity's XR, the you know VR and AR support, and then um, uh, dive in a bit into the XR platform architecture. Um, do a little uh, uh, talk about the features of AR Foundation, and then actually do a live demo of the XR Interaction Toolkit um, for VR. So the um, put this in up front because um, you know I got a lot of the, in, in the research materials other than actually just using the stuff. Um, I got the information from a number of really good sources. If you wanted to see more, one is from the Unite presentation um, last fall. Um, in January, there was a Unity blog post with some additional updates and um, the Oculus Connect presentation also last fall. Um, and of course, there's the Unity forums as a forum dedicated to the XR plugins and subsystems. Um, so let me, uh, I think I'm gonna mute my video now so that um, uh, when I jump into Unity from time to time, I just wanna try to limit the processing and bandwidth here. Okay. So, um, you know, before 2014, I would call this uh, the prehistory where Unity did have some support for stereo cameras. And, um, you know, there was some AR toolkits out there. There was an open source AR toolkit that is still around, although it's kind of defunct, but um, it is out there if you Googled it. Um, and, you know, they do have a um, SDK for Unity, so you can actually interface to it. But then um, the next phase is, you know, what I would call the dawn of consumer VR, at least, you know, in this millennium, um, where, you know, things like the Oculus DK2, uh, Google VR for Cardboard and Daydream, OpenVR came out as uh, Unity packages that you would just install as a Unity package and it would interface to their runtimes. And they, you know, all of these providers would also um, offer higher level toolkits. So the Oculus integration, uh, Steam interaction, Daydream elements were um, higher level components, shaders, um, prefabs, um, camera rigs, things like that, that you could use to assemble your, your projects. But it, you were pretty much tied to the platform that you were building for because of, uh, there were so many pieces that came from directly from that specific provider. Then uh, the next, in 2017, 2018, I'll call the, the age of built-in VR and AR support. Um, and that was when the drivers or the native APIs were moved into the player settings, the XR settings. And uh, that was a, an important first step for Unity to bring uh, the, these devices into the fold. Um, at the same time, Unity needed a, an AR solution. They partnered with Euphoria that lasted about a year in terms of actually shipping with it. But uh, it clearly, it also, you know, both of these sort of point to the fact that Unity recognized there was a uh, uh, something going on that they needed to uh, provide support in, in Unity. Um, but even with the, like the player settings, you still needed to install provider packages for higher level interfaces. 
And there were several attempts to build integrated toolkits. Um, VRTK was very popular. Uh, the MRTK is from Microsoft and it handled both, um, that's a mixed reality toolkit, handled both HoloLens and the uh, VR immersive headsets. Um, and now it, it actually supports other vendors as well. But the, the, you know, the, the problem with these was tried to be an all in one solution built on top of everything. And um, the, their, at least the VRTK was open source, so it's community based. So there's advantages and disadvantages of that approach. So what we're seeing now as of 2019 um, and moving forward is Unity's uh, attempt to decouple the XR platform uh, from the core Unity engine using packages. Uh, but it's, it's, it's directly integrated to the underlying core engine APIs. And they're also then working on toolkits that are built on top of this device independent platform so that you can build your applications for the uh, toolkit uh, APIs or SDKs and, um, and, and try to be as you know, device independent without having to juggle multiple underlying SDKs. So this picture here is similar to what I just presented. It's from one of the Unity talks and it's not exactly uh, the way I framed it, but um, you know, this was their view of how they progressed. And so I think it's interesting. A um, couple of things I didn't mention like Magic Leap and um, AR Kit and AR Core and things like that, but pretty much the same timeline. Okay, we good so far? Okay, we good so far? Okay, I assume we're live, right? <laughs> Graham. So we're live, and I think we're pretty good. All right. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'm going to do an occasional sanity check just to make sure I'm not talking to myself here. Yes. No, that's a fair um, <laughs> so um, so the so the, last year the Unity announced this XR platform, and the basic objectives are you know to being consistent with the overarching Unity philosophy of um, democratization of game and 3D development uh, with this build once, deploy anywhere approach. And that's build meaning you creating your app. Um, you still have to build it for the target platform, but <laughs> so I'm not sure why they didn't say create once, but anyway, that's their slogan. Um, and, you know, to provide ongoing support, they, you know, they recognize that there's always going to be new devices, new vendors, new um, VR and AR stuff coming out every few months. Um, and these new devices and, and existing ones are always coming up with updates and new features and capabilities. And so how to make those available to you as a Unity developer in a timely way. Um, and so what they have defined are APIs that um, the, the, the you know, assembled sort of the the common features of uh, cl and classified them and provide an API that you can then develop for um, without having to know which specific um, hardware or device you're actually going to eventually run on. And I would say another goal of you know having a platform built into Unity is you know for the longer term project maintainability, compatibility, and and LTS um, of your projects. And that's you know in a if you're doing more than just hackathon or playing around, these are really important uh, capabilities as well. So I you know as frustrating as this transition period might be for some some of us. Um, the, with you know this in mind, it's a huge step forward for the industry, I think, and for developers. So here's a picture again from another one of those sources that shows the the overall architecture of the Unity XR platform. So if you look along the bottom row, you see the uh, provider implementation. So that's you know, whether it's AR Core, AR Kit, Oculus, uh, Windows, Magic Leap, so forth. Um, then in the middle, 
uh, are the APIs or the SDKs that are the part of the core Unity engine. And so this is what they call the framework, the XR plugin framework. And uh, then, and so the APIs here are exposed down below to the hardware providers and exposed above to you, the developer, so the developer tools. And then there are sets of developer tools built on top of that, that Unity is also providing specifically the AR Foundation and the XR Interaction Toolkit. So um, to get, you know, use the plugins, you go into your project settings and um, there's now a settings called XR plugin management and the uh, plugin providers are um, listed there. You can then install them and it's per platform. So you can see there's tabs for the, the standalone desktop as well. And then for Android, um, maybe one day there'll be an Apple logo there. I don't know. <laughs> Um, so, and then, but when it's mutually exclusive with the XR settings and player settings. So if you do, uh, install the plugin management, then you do not have, you have access to the XR settings. These are deprecated and will go away. But as part of the current situation, um, if, you know, until everyone gets onto the plugin architecture, Unity is still has available. If you don't install the plugin management, then you can use the the legacy um, built in. So I have a little demo of this. Um, we have a um, we have a quick question. Um, okay. What version of Unity supports the XR plugin management? Yeah. So it starts with twenty nineteen point three and moving forward. And so uh, what I have here is a, I did a new a project new. I'm using the universal render pipeline. This is on 2019.3.11. So it's the latest and greatest. Um, and uh, I have a, uh, um, let's pull so, so this is a brand new project where, you know, the plugins are not installed. So if you go into edit, um, project settings that pops up the project settings window. I, hopefully you can see this, but right now on the bottom is XR pl plugin management, install plugin management. So I click on that and um, uh, give it a second. Um, and, and, and then it will come up with the list of, um, of um, plugin that you can then add to your project. So you can see here, there's a, 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 a Magic Leap, an Oculus Windows Mixed Reality, and a mock HMD, which is useful if you want to develop and don't have a headset. Um, it, I don't think it supports hand controllers, so I think it's actually kind of um, limited. I mean, or you would just put um, uh, conditional compiles in your code to handle user input separately but but let's uh you know if you if you pick the oculus one then it goes and it installs those packages and um just take a second here i i i do have another project with everything installed in case we have a fail but i, I actually wanted to literally walk you through this okay so so now we have um so now you can see under the plugin management, there's a Oculus and I click on that. Now there are Oculus specific settings that would, um, uh, you know, that are exposed for the Oculus specific um, device. And if we, um, if we open up the package manager, uh, go into in project, you can see that it installed this plugin management plug-in uh, uh, package. So that, that first button was really just a shortcut for this. And um, it opened, it, it installed the Oculus plugin, Oculus XR plugin. In the uh, plugin management package, there's another, there's some sample here called import into uh, the, the, hard to read, there we go. The example XR management implementation, you do not need to install that. That is if you wanted to be a provider 
and write a plugin that goes into the plugin management, then you can install these scripts. But you can see that there are some dependencies that when you install the plugin management, it does install a couple other packages, the XR legacy input helpers and the subsystem registration. And so now if you, and so if you actually um, went down into your project window and opened up the packages, even though those dependencies are not presently listed in the package manager, because they're just dependencies, they are actually show up in the, in the uh, package, project package assets hierarchy. So that's kind of cool that you can drill down into those things. Um, okay. So, you know, given a project that is like a brand new scene, um, like here we have this, this scene from the, the sample scene from here. Um, I'm going to just uh, get rid of this post processing on there. But uh, so you see, we have a main camera. And if, uh, and so, so when we in install the, the plugins, that adds for us um, some a new folder where you can convert your main camera to an XR rig. And under components XR, there's a camera offset and track pose driver. So basically the plugins give you, and, and the track pose driver is part of that legacy input system I'm not, uh, for the, the tracking component. So if we, let's say, um, so let's say we wanted to make a camera rig by hand, and then later I'll show you with the interaction toolkit, they have prefabs that you can just drop in. But if I were to, you know, create a game object and uh, call it, you know, my camera rig, and then um, under that, I could create a, an empty game object, and that would be um, for defining the floor offset. Um, and then you can take your main camera and um, actually let me copy this transform over to the rig. Okay. And now if I take the, the main camera and drop it in as a child of offset, um, then, and so now, um, so, so I can select the main camera and then I can go into component and say XR tracked pose driver. And now it's added a track pose driver. So now the, the transform of the headset will track with my HMD. And then in the, the rig, if you add this component called camera offset, and then we can drag this um, child in there. Then now, the um, based on the tracking mode, whether you're using the device settings or you want to be relative to the floor, it will automatically offset your camera. So that's how they deal with room scale versus stationary, and 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 how different hardware registers the the height and position of your headset. Um, so that's kind of nice that it's all uh, unified there. Okay, so if I were to, by chance, by any luck, um, hit play, I have my Oculus. So if you can see now, I'm tracking and it figured out the right height. All right, yay. Okay, so if I switch out of this and go back to our slides. So, um, you know, what we've seen is that the, the XR plugins provide a native API for the providers that they implement and it allows devices to then plug into a Unity project. Um, part of the philosophy there is that at runtime, there's a life cycle of these devices and subsystems that 
you know, they're discoverable. You can write your code and say, does my, you know, what devices does, um, are out there? What features does this device support? And be able to activate them at runtime. Um, and be able to independently update these plugins separate from the core Unity engine uh, release cycle. So the officially supported platforms right now are ARKit, ARCore, HoloLens, Magic Leap, Oculus, um, Windows Mixed Reality, and PlayStation. The Gear VR is officially not supported. And um, there is then this, con this verified solution partners for, for Unity where Unity will not maintain the plugins, but the other providers do. So um, that would include the Open VR, which um, has been uh, uh, a, a, a long time wanting has to be available, as well as a, a cardboard one for um, uh, from from Google. Um, and so we're like sitting here waiting for these things to happen, but some breaking news as of today uh, that uh, Valve has announced the open VR plugin for XR. I have not looked at it. Uh, Jono Forbes uh, posted this in Slack and, um, and it was like, yay. Uh, so hopefully, um, and, and they're actually calling it 1.0.0 preview, which means it's more than just 0.0.1. Um, <laughs> So we'll see how that, uh, that's good, but that's great news. Um, and then if you're interested, there, even though there's been l very little um, from Google and all, you know, they, dr they dropped um, Daydream as an official platform and made it open source. Well, a group of people did get move forward with a um, cardboard VR plugin that is, um, out there and, and you can play with it and, and uh, contribute to that project. So, you know, so it, it, I was gonna come into this and say, this is so frustrating because how can, you know, open VR just not be there? But, but now what we can say is this really shows the strength of this architecture where uh, the providers can, um, can give us plugins and do their updates at a in a cycle that's independent of Unity itself, and it's all decoupled. Okay, so back to this picture, um, we can now you know take a look at the XR framework plugin and the the XR SDKs that are there. Now I have the slide; it's. Um, Basically, all I know about it is this slide. I'm not, you know, this level of developer, um, but it's an interesting picture to give you a sense. So on the left is what the Oculus is and the, and the Steam and, uh, you know, whoever, um, uh, Microsoft. This is the, the native C++ API that they would write to and they provide certain capabilities to Unity. And then on, that was on the left side. On the right side is the C Sharp API that we have access to as developers. And um, in the middle are these subsystems that uh, provide the features and capabilities, but the hardware is decoupled from the features. So what are these XR subsystems that we're talking about? Um, so, okay, so the feature, the capability is it separates them into subsystems. They're decoupled from one another, uh, things like display and rendering and input. And each system, okay, as I said this, it, it has a, C sh a developer sh facing C sharp interface and a provider facing C plus plus interface and it then also interfaces to the um, rest of Unity. So these are the list of subsystems, again, from one of the other talks that I referenced. Um, and some are more mature than others. Um, 
and some are supported, let's say, in AR, but not in VR. Some are in VR and not in AR, but it's all under the same uh, platform, and you can query you know, it to, and activate the subsystems on demand at runtime. OK. So uh, before I jump into the toolkit, I'll sh then show you another thing that you get with the um, plugin system. And that is in project settings, if you go in to, this is for the legacy input manager, the old, uh, what they call old input manager versus the new input system. Um, you know, these are the default uh, bindings. But if you go into, yeah, in assets and click on seed XR input bindings, then we get now all these XRI um, uh, bindings. So for example, the right trigger uh, string name maps to a joystick, the 10th axis joystick for, you know, uh, between zero and one tracking, pulling on a trigger, whereas right trigger button is a button that maps to joystick button 10 of uh, 15. And um, let's see if I can. Uh, so if you were to actually go to the Unity manual and look at like trigger, you can see that the right controller trigger is ten, index 10 and the trigger button is button 15. So, um, and, you know, and, and, and this, you know, the fact that these like vary across um, devices um, is all now, um, they, they give you a nice map set of mappings there. So. Uh, for example, if we were to um, write a little script, and I have one called input test. So if I were to drop this onto the, um, oops, Let's see if that pops up for you. Open this up. Um, basically, so if I get button down xrr right trigger button uh xrr right trigger button up so you know it's just like any other input that you might be familiar with but and so now it's it's nicely um integrated um i personally i haven't used the new input system but supposedly it supports that so okay Let's see where my, oh, there it is. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So now I'll just do a little bit of talking about AR Foundation. I used AR Foundation in that game, Epic Resources, that I just talked about, and some other projects I've done as well. I did a uh, wind turbine sighting project that used uh, uh, AR Foundation. Um, and uh, um, but basically, and this has been around a little bit longer than the XR Interaction Toolkit. The the idea there is to have multi-platform support for both handheld and wearable AR. Um, it's now built on top of the XR subsystems and plugins that we just looked at. Um, it has things like session management and whether the hardware, you know. Like if you're on a phone, does it actually support AR? Um, it does the device pose tracking in world space. And then it supports the detection of environment features like planes and points and uh, like faces, whatever. Um, it will detect that, to track it, and allow you to raycast it. Now, obviously, Unity is not doing that work. It's interfacing to the underlying AR um, uh, platform in the under, in the underlying operating systems, but uh, we as developers have a single interface to those. Uh, it also is um, getting more and more support for two D image tracking and object detection, light estimation, and and other features. 
So here's actually from the um, Unity manual and they maintain this showing you what's currently updated or they're working on. Uh, <laughs> I like the pass through videos not available in HoloLens and major <laughs> Uh, and I mean, but that's I mean, obvious, but it obviously if you had, you know, some kind of UI that you wanted to be able to turn the background video on or off, then you wouldn't, you, would, you could ask the subsystem if it's available. When you install AR Foundation, it adds some uh, game objects to the um, game object menu under the XR heading for your session and your session origin and stuff. Um, and likewise, there's the components for the, including the track pose driver that we looked at before and um, uh, feature managers and visual visualizers for like planes and point clouds and stuff. So, okay. Next, we now will jump into the XR interaction toolkit. So to install that, it's currently in preview. So you would have to go into the package manager and, and turn on the preview packages and then it'll show up in the list. And we'll do that in a second. Um, and so again, this is um, for you and, I, and me as a Unity developer to write to this SDK. Um, it supports both VR and AR. And it's basically a collection of high level interaction components. Uh, one of the keys to it is the implementation of this interactor, interactable paradigm that we've seen time and again on Daydream Elements and st the, the um, Steam Interaction Toolkit and everybody that basically your hand controller is an interactor and your objects that you can pick up and, st and grab and throw are the interactables. Um, but it's cross-platform and it's built on top of the XR platform. So, um, and then, you know, for your hand controllers and input, um, it, again, those are also cross-platform with features like hover, select, and grab. It also has haptic feedback events so that you can um, trigger, trigger those as well as um, highlighting, you know, and, and stuff for selected objects and, and stuff in, in your scene. So it, I think it provides a very nice foundation for uh, writing your own um, uh, VR and AR apps. And it also does support the Canvas UI uh, using the standard XR controllers. And, as well as a uh, VR camera rig prefabs for both stationary and room scale um, tracking modes. And it has teleportation components that are very handy and flexible. Uh, on the, if you're writing for AR, it does, it requires AR foundation, but then uh, it provides the interactivity that AR Foundation itself doesn't have. So things like um, uh, gestures um, mapping to, you know, gesture events, um, interactable placement of virtual objects in the real world. Um, so you place, select, translate, rotate, scale. Let's see, AR annotations to, I don't know. So basically, that's the uh, visual visualizing planes and point clouds and stuff. And um, and I, and then it, the interaction toolkit also supports the canvas and buttons and stuff like that. There is a new component that you would add called a track device graphic raycaster, as opposed to device graphic raycaster. Um, and it supports both the old input manager and the new input system. So if you install this, I would also highly recommend you go check out the Unity GitHub for the XR Interaction Toolkit examples. Um, note that the, the, so there's, these are full projects. These aren't 
Unity packages. Um, and they're actually, this GitHub is two separate subfolders that are two separate Unity projects, one for an AR demo, one for VR. Um, so what I do usually do is I uh, clone the project, open it up, then do an export to a Unity package, and then bring those components into my project. So I have um, some of the nice assets that they offer and, and example scenes and stuff that I can use in the same project. Okay. So let's see if we can get this to work. So to um, demo this, I'll do exactly what I said, which is I'll go into the package manager, uh, show preview packages. Hit refresh. Oh, in project, all packages. Okay. And then I'll just search for XR. And there's our XR interaction toolkit. So I'll go and install that. And then once that installed, it, it, you will see that it installs a rich set of new um, game objects and components um, into the project. So if we go up to game object XR, we now have, you know, like this room scale XR rig, stationary XR rig, locomotion system, all this stuff. And then under components XR, there's um, you know, these components that you can add to. I don't have something selected in stuff, game object. So you can add to a, um, so like your interactors and interactable stuff. Um, so again, if you had an existing scene that you wanted to add this to, if you just go ahead, this is a caveat, if you go ahead and say XR, um, you know, room scale rig, it will not put the, um, unless they fix that. Oh, they fixed it. Huh. Okay, never mind that. So what, what you used to have to do was um, you had to delete, oh, I see it moved it. You had to delete your main camera for before or it wouldn't add one that up itself. So I'll just back up on that. Um, so let's just pick a, a camera rig, okay. And um, so, so now you can see that this camera rig is basically what we just made by hand um, in terms of the XR interaction toolkit, instead of that uh, camera offset, it actually has a more robust version of that camera offset component called XR rig that does still let you pick the, you know, have this inner, this middle camera offset object, but it has some other things as well, like tracking options and, um, and stuff. And then, the, and then the main camera has like we had before, the tracked pose driver, but it also adds a left hand and right hand controller. And we'll get into this um, in a little bit. Um, but before I do, um, I'll also mention that when you insert this rig, it also inserts a XR interaction manager. And so, so again, the, the paradigm that I mentioned of the interactor interactable. So the hand controller has a XR ray interactor, um, which means you can point to things. And then an object in the scene would be an interactable. And if you, it's so right now the interactor can interact with any interactables but you can pair them up or partition them if you had more complex scenes or contexts where you know, the hand needed to only interact with certain, type, certain objects. And then later on the hand interacts with other, you can have multiple XR interaction managers in the scene and um, match them up. So, okay. So now if I go, if I look at my scene view, um, I guess gizmos are not 
Oh, there we go. So with the gizmos turned on, you can see that it also renders the guardian boundaries of my camera rig. So if I take this scene and hit play, it should still be good. Okay, so using their prefab instead of um, what we built by hand, just a validation there. Okay, so um, drilling down a little bit more into the controller, there's this XR controller um, component that um, you can select a, a model prefab if you had a hand or a gun or a weapon or whatever you wanted to actually be in the hand if, um, for your controller. Um, it has options like animate and, and so forth. And then you can, you have controls up here for the usage. So you have basically select, activate and UI press. And so right now by default, it's set up that this is the right hand controller. It's using the grip button for select and it's using the trigger button for activate. Um, and then visually, so if I were to hit play again, um, let me do maximize. If I were to hit play, uh, then my hand, I'm using the ray. Um, so it's, it's a lightsaber type thing. Um, and you have other types of um, visualization of what you're pointing at. And even the ray itself has things like straight line versus projectile curve versus Bezier curve. So like, like teleporting, you would use a, a curve, for example. So um, it's nice. Uh, and then in here you have um, uh, events for like the sounds, whether you want to play an audio clip on enter, exit, select, haptic events. Um, and then you have interactor events like so that you can interface this to your your app um, hovering and selecting and stuff okay we good so yes we're good <laughs> we're yeah, all, thank you sorry it's, it's very difficult when you don't have an audience in front of you but yes right okay, now i just i could talk about this for hours i just hope someone's listening oh yes <laughs> okay so um okay so the next so basically the what i'm going to do the rest of the, of uh this evening is just i just have a couple more things to demo um so we're um getting towards the end of this and um so the next thing i want to do is is show the uh the grabbing capability so i have um a scene that i made okay this is just a an empty scene Okay, with some uh, meme man heads. You guys are familiar <laughs> with these guys. Um, That's amazing. And uh, <laughs> one of my favorite models, actually, um, if you go on, I think it's on um, Sketchfab or something, it, it has a half a million polys. And so I had to decimate it in, in Blender to get it down to like two and a half K. But um, uh, I love this guy. So, um, so I have this little scene set up where um, here, here's my camera rig set up over here. There's a little pedestal with a uh, a gun that I made out of a a cube and a cylinder, um, and uh, so now if I were to just um, take this gun and I want to make it grabbable. So we already know that the default rig hand controller is um, is interactable. It has a, a ray interactor. So now when I take the gun, I can add a component and say it's grabbable. And that and so that also automatically adds a rigid body, so it can be selected. Um, 
And I think one thing I want to do is, is change the movement type to uh, instantaneous from kinematic just for performance. Um, but you can see there's lots of parameters here that you can explore uh, to get the kind of um, uh, performance that you want, these smoothing capabilities and stuff. Maybe I could do smoothing instead of the instantaneous tracking, but whatever. Um, and so now if I um, press play, Okay, and I go over here there. So now when I, when I point to the gun, it, uh, the, the, the ray, uh, in, in, the, the ray um, interactor changes color. Obviously you can control that. And I pull the, the trigger. Oh, maybe I didn't trigger, why not? Um, It's supposed to pick it up. I'm going to grab. Well, I won't worry about it. I'm just going to take the scene. Do that you I need made to say which transformer it attaches to when you grab it? Or is yeah. that automatically detected? Let's see if this. Um, whoa. Run. Okay, so, well, so I, I don't think it's the, um, hmm. Let me just close this down, and reopen it. Oh, I know what it was. It wasn't wrong. Um, I didn't have the headset on my head. And with the Oculus, you have to put my thumb over the sensor. So that it, otherwise, the hand controllers don't actually respond. Um, OK, so hit play. There we go. And so now um, we have the gun and I can you know, throw it and then I can go and pick it up again. You can see that the near plane on the cameras set to default. So um, it's, you know, you just go into your main camera and, and change that to zero. It's usually 0.3. So that would get rid of that clipping problem. Okay, so then um, now, so, so, that, so basically if you look at the hand controller that was using the select usage is the grip is set up for the grip button. And then the activate usage is set up to the trigger. So now let's wire up that. So on the, the gun, if I were to um, add a, I'm hearing background music. Is that me or? Um, I think it might be you. Okay, I don't know what it is. So I have a script that is very simple that basically inflates a balloon. When you pull on the trigger, when you hold the trigger, it, um, so, so I have this create balloon. So I have, so at the top I have a, um, a balloon prefab and a grow rate and so forth. And then I have a create balloon public function that instantiates the balloon and uh, turns off is kinematic so that it sticks to the tip of the, of the gun. And then in each update, I call grow balloon, which basically increases the scale of the balloon. And then when I let go of the, of the trigger, it will call release. And um, 
and add some velocity to the rigid body. So to wire that into the app, I can take the gun, let's see. So, so did I add the script to it? Okay, so I'll add the script to the gun. And you can see the gun has a, has a tip uh, transform. And um, I'll wire the tip into the script and I'll wire a prefab into the balloon. Oops. Okay. And then I will um, go into my right hand controller and you can see the uh, interactor has these interactor events. So, oh, it looks like it was already set up. Oh, this was, um, okay. So, so this was so that the, the, uh, I didn't mention this. When I grab the gun, I hide the lines so that I'm not showing both the lines and the gun. Um, okay. So now, on the on the gun, let's see. On the gun itself, when it has this grab interactable and it has interactable events. So what we want to do is add an event for the select, enter and select exit, and we will basically call. Balloon gun controller, create balloon. And then when you release the trigger, balloon gun controller, release balloon. And now, so what is my balloon? My balloon is this cool looking coronavirus. Okay. <laughs> So let me hide that dude. It's very topical. Yes. And hit play. Okay. The gun. Okay. I think I um let me see. I didn't wire that up exactly right. Um, yeah, we're not getting many frames per second on the stream, so. Sort of oh, I see. see. I wired up to the select, which was what the gun would be. It's supposed to wire up to activate. Gotcha. So again, I will. Um, oh, I know what the music I'm hearing is. Is the Oculus Home. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Um, <laughs> okay, let me see. So here's the shoot gun scene that I prepared. Okay, so now um, you can see on the gun that the interactable events are wired in for activate and deactivate. Okay, so I got my gun. Oh, very nice. <laughs> All right. So there we got a cute little game. Very simple. Easy to see. So cool. So last thing I want to just demo is the, um, the canvas. And um, so this will go quickly. Uh, so in the XR game objects, there is a UI canvas. So if you're using the XR interactive system, you want to use the UI canvas, for the XR one, rather than the default, you know, UI canvas. And that's, I mean, you can build it yourself, but if you look at the canvas, 
you can see that it also added a track device graphic raycaster in addition to the regular graphic raycaster. And also in the event system, it added these XRUI input modules. That's a bug. It should only need it only needs one of them, but for some reason it adds two. Um, but now um, you can interact with uh, game objects, uh, UIs. So um, you know, under the canvas, you can create all your regular UI, you know, a panel and a button, stuff like that. Again, I have a scene that I already made that. Um, uh, let's get the right point of view here. Seems like a really great feature for people who are doing both XR versions and non XR versions of their game. Right, right. You can use the same UI for both. And so the, the button um, basically all, you know, right now it's sort of um, sort of a poor man the reset. I literally go to each one of these um, meme. Where is it on the targets? It, on my meme man, I had written a little reset uh, transform script. So now the button goes and for each one of those, it just calls reset transform. So now um, when I hit play, pick up the gun. And then um, I drop the gun, it restores the, the line. I can then pick a button and it resets the, the guys. And I can... That's pretty spectacular. Yeah. All right, and this thing gets really big if you want to light it. <laughs> I think that it interferes with the collider on the gun itself at some point. So. <laughs> So that's pretty much the demo. Uh, uh, this project is up on GitHub. If you want to, I can share the link. Um, and um, so, um, okay, so just to summarize, you know, what, what I, I talked about is that the XR platform is um, consistent with the Unity's build once uh, deploy uh, anywhere. Um, it provides ongoing timely, or at least supposedly timely, but really what we mean is decoupled support for new devices and features. Um, I was gonna be very cynical until today when I found out that the OpenVR plugin is now available, <laughs> but that just demonstrates this, that um, you know, uh, it's decoupled and, and, and literally timely new features can be added. Uh, the plugin, the, the XR plugins provides a native API that device providers can implement. And then the subsystems divide the functionality into logical sets that sits in between the developers, that's us, and the providers. And then on top of that, we have the toolkits like AR Foundation for AR and the Interaction Toolkit for Interactions. That's it. All right. Thank, Thank you, you Jonathan. Um, yeah. Yeah, well, I guess we'll take questions from the, the chat. Um, so if you have a question, feel free to throw them in Twitch chat. Um, yeah. I was not familiar with me, ma'am. <laughs> a sign of me being completely behind the times well, on this if one. You, if you go to knowyourmemes.com, it'll I see. Really... <laughs> I will, yes, have my work attached for me. Uh, Vinny good. asks if uh, all these packages are stable or are they still in preview right now? Yes and no. Um, <laughs> so the, <laughs> you know, I mean, Package manager itself is stable. So the, the concept of separating things out, um, the subsystems are 
for the most part, very stable. I mean, AR Foundation uh, has been using the subsystem uh, architecture and um, for VR, um, you know, the Oculus was there and Windows was there out, right out of the box. And so they seem very stable to me. Um, you're not seeing, you know, super frequent updates. Um, and so I would say yes. I mean, we'll see what's up with the open VR, but obviously there's going to be a lot of people pounding on it. And so they'll get lots of feedback um, in, the, in the short term. So, um, you know, that to me, that was the, the biggest showstopper for people is, you know, it was like, well, should I start a project with this? And that was the go to answer. So now things have changed. So now we have to, we have to refine the answer a little more <laughs> to, to really drill down and see, okay, what would keep, but you know, uh, it is in preview, the, at least the interaction toolkits in preview, I guess there's two separate questions. One is the plugins versus the interaction toolkit. So the interaction toolkit is in preview, the plugins are not, those are actual um, uh, verified um, uh, packages. Okay. Um, question I have for you is, um, so how cross device is it truly, if you wanted to create something and then target multiple devices, are you able to maintain a solid, stable center core of your Git or your code and produce builds for each of those different devices? Or are you finding you still have to do device specific adjustments for each one? Um, yeah, I, no, I think what it does is it raises the level, um, the, the, that line up so that now really what you're talking about is, is this a desktop app or is it a mobile app? Is this a wearable AR or a handheld AR? And you would still need to obviously tune your features to those kind of target platform capabilities, but the underlying, um, you know, select and grab and throw and those things are now device independent. And if you want to use something that's new, like, um, you know, the, there's these charts that show you like, you know, face recognition or full body recognition, you can now query the subsystem and say, is the device I'm running on supporting this? And then um, adjust your, your app at runtime. And, and then if, you know, then, then even if you build your app and then a month later, the underlying um, uh, OS system now supports that feature, it didn't before, you, I think you get that, at least that's the theory. Cool. Um, Vinny has kind of a follow-up to his question, um, which is, do you happen to know if anyone can create a provider or do we need to be certified or however it was labeled? I don't know. Uh, I mean, I'm sure. <laughs> well, I, I think anyone can do it. The toolkit's there, um, and the guys that are doing the the Google Cardboard one is just an open source project. I don't know if they have an official approval from community. Um, so there are examples, but whether it shows up in Package Manager, maybe that you know would require. Um, I, I, I'm not exactly sure how the internals of package manager works. I, I know it can interface with GitHub somehow, but. Um... Yeah, I can do uh, GitHub links, if I remember correctly. We had a, we actually had a talk at Bug about the uh, internals of this a couple months ago. Yeah. Um, um, we have a question from Cable State Studios, pretty new to XR. Where these interactions and features, were these actual interactions and features something that everyone had to do by hand before this? No, what you had was you had Steam's version, you had Oculus's version, you had Google Daydream Elements, or you had VRTK, which often was built on top of those packages already and then made it, you know, very robust or it was kind of a bloatware, on, to be honest. Um, it sort of tried to be it. So I mean, not to, not to uh, hate on VRTK, but VRTK, I think they tried to be a point and click, everything's available in the inspector solution. And I think that the XRI 
is a developer solution. So it gives you a set of core capabilities that's very flexible, but you can make it your own. I mean, there was a point where people were saying, I can, I, I run a game, I know it was built with VRTK. Um, and so, you know, you have, but, but I, I don't think, I mean, so the, you, you didn't have to build it yourself, but you had, you had to build for a specific SDK. Okay, thank you. Uh, next question is from Salty McShivers. Um, does the XRDK support the HoloLens? It seems like its AR capabilities are tablet-based. Um, my understanding is it does support HoloLens. I mean, they say that on the on the documentation. Um, it may be HoloLens 2. I don't know. Um, and Microsoft still has the MRTK that probably the majority of developers are uh, using. Um, but they are, uh, they definitely were out of the box a supporter for the XR plugin architecture. We have a question, MPS um, uh, Chinks 36. Um, any standard hand grab pose models and showing controller models for different platform mm. things you can get with, say, the Steam interaction system? Yeah, I do not know the answer to that. Um, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that, there's, I mean, there, and there, that's multifaceted. I mean, there's sort of like the Oculus avatar hands um, versus like hand recognition and gestures from Quest, you know, or, and, you know, or AR hand recognition. So there's, you know, whether it's there now or not, the subsystem design allows that to be exposed to you as a developer in a device independent way. So if it is exposed by the provider through this architecture, then you, I would recommend using that as opposed to going directly to their SDK, but you always have the option to go there. So it's, you know, for a while we're gonna be having, you know, pound defines or pound ifs in our code. Um, if you have specific requirements. But. That sounds familiar. <laughs> okay. Do we have any more questions? Oh, I'll take them a moment to type in their questions if they do have them. But, um, oh, we do have one last minute question. Uh, JC Gray 2, what about integration of uh, 6D ALI with AR kit to improve meshing where there is not so much. Wait, I didn't get the. I didn't, didn't get quite get that one. Uh, yeah. 6D alley? 6, 6, uh, integration of 6D alley? 6D alley. Six dimensionality? Oh, so, uh, six dimensionality. Oh, 6D uh, AI. <laughs> so anyway, what, what, what's the rest of the, probably the answer is yes and no. <laughs> <laughs> um, Not something I'm familiar with there. Sorry about that, JP. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think, you know, we're still in a, in a transition point. And if you know what you're talking about and need a, something, then I would recommend learning what the architecture has and then build on top of that. And at some point, maybe some of the stuff you built you'll be able to replace with something that Unity provides. But there's all different levels at which you can hook into this. Um, and again, it, I think it provides a good framework for doing that as opposed to just letting the industry be, or us as developers flounder and everyone doing their own thing. I mean, it seemed like over the past few years, four or five years, every time I start a new VR project, I would be using a different SDK because the one I had been using was deficient and there's some newer one out there, you know, and it's like, and then trying to go in and maintain those projects was insane. Um, so uh, I think this at least gives us some, some sanity to work towards. Okay. I think uh, our last two questions then. Um, one from the Shining Lamp Post. For optimization and profiling, is there a way to mimic specific headsets or devices? 
Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Um, there is that um, mock HMD that has, I think, single pass and dual pass. Um, but other than that, that's that that's it's, that's probably a really interesting ripe area for if someone for a master's thesis or something you know <laughs> if someone wants to work on that project I think that'd be pretty interesting. Yeah, Unity uh, recently added a device simulator, so it doesn't really give you performance characteristics of devices, but it lets you like see what like I, I use it for mobile, like see what things look like on different devices. Um, so if you're doing mobile VR, you might be able to use that. And I don't know how well it would work, but with per stuff, yeah, you kind of need to just do it on device because mm. it's so device specific. Useful. Okay, our last question tonight. Salty McShivers. God, that's a great name. Have you had a chance to experiment <laughs> with using HDRP or URP with Unity VR? Thoughts, if any? I have not. I use, well, no, I use the, the, the universal render pipeline. Um, on all my new projects and then have to bug the asset developers to please come out with the shader that supports it that I'm using. But um, it, to me, it's, it, and I've done some profiling on that between, you know, um, the regular built in 3D uh, pipeline and the UI, and it's amazingly fast, I think. Um, so, but I have the, uh, HDRP and VR is was really only supported in the last few months, and um, I have not had a chance to play with it. I think Elliot has. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was gonna, I was gonna say it's a pretty, it's a shame he's not here, but <laughs> indeed. Uh, all right, I think that's cool. our questions for the evening. Um, thank you very much. Fascinating talk. Um, yeah very very useful i will have to tear my code apart and start over <laughs> and make the most of this it looks fantastic so thank you very much um for coming to speak to us tonight jonathan and Great. thank you so much to our audience um who have joined us and um congratulations to our two winners of the rider licenses um you can only win a copy of rider if you have registered on meetup so if you have joined us tonight and you did not register on meetup you are potentially missing out next month we'll have two more licenses for JetBrains rider um that we will give away to anyone who has registered and signed up rsvp'd to the meetup um site um so next month don't forget to do that um and to our two winners tonight, um, I already got Bob's details. Nick, you need to look at your messages on Twitch and whisper back to us, or you need to contact us via the meetup group, and we will send you your copy of your license. Um, so thank you, everybody. Join us next month for a look at kind words with Luigi, and uh, we will be announcing that very soon on uh, the usual channels. So thank you very much. And we'll see yeah. you next time. Thanks, everybody. All right.